Hey everyone, welcome back to Chicago. The Cube is excited to be live on day two of Ansible Fest 2022. Lisa Martin and John for you're here having some great conversations. A lot of Cube alumni, a lot of wisdom from the Ansible community coming at you on this program this week. You know, John, We've been, we've been hearing stories about the power and the capabilities and the collective wisdom of the Ansible community. You can feel it here. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. It's, Ansible is nothing, as Stephanie Chira said yesterday, if not yeah. a community. And the significant contributions that it makes yeah. over and over again are its fuel. I mean, the power of the community is what drives Ansible. It's going to drive the future of, I think, cloud and our next generation modern application environment. And it's the collective intelligence it's a production system at the end of the day, and I think these guys have harnessed it, so it should be a really great segment to talk about all the contributor work that's been done, so I'm looking forward to it. We've got two great alumni here to talk about the contributor work, how you can get involved. Please welcome back to theCUBE, Carol Chen, Principal Community Architect at Red Hat. Adam Miller joins us as well, fresh from the keynote stage, Senior Principal Software Engineer at Red Hat. <laughs> guys, great to have you on theCUBE. Great well, to be thank here. You. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we, we talked, we enjoyed your keynotes, Adam, and what you were talking about on stage. The Ansible Contributor Summit, that's something, I mean, you guys have been doing what, this is the seven? You've had seven so far in just a couple of years? Well, we had seven virtual contributor seven summits. Seven virtual, in, this yeah, is the first, Monday was the first in person. In first in person since the pandemic, and actually the 15th contributor summit overall. 15th overall, yes. talk about these, contributor summits, what the contributors are able to do and the influence that it's having on Ansible, Red Hat, and what mm -hmm. people are able to do with cloud at the edge automation. Yeah. So our community contributors have always had ways to influence and contribute to the project, but the contributor summit is really a place where we can get people together, uh, preferably in the same place so that we can you know, have a really uh, great dynamic uh, conversations and interactions. But um, we also want to make sure that we don't leave out people who have been constantly online joining us. So this year, um, we are so uh, happy to be here in Chicago in person. Uh, we've had about 60 to 70 uh, here uh, joining us. And at first I thought maybe we'll have one third of the attendees joining online because about 30 to 40 people signed up to join online. But in the end, we have more than 100 per people watching our live stream, so that's, more than half of the attendees overall were joining us online. So that really shows where you know the contributors are interested and in participating right. from you know, around it's been, the world. It's been interesting, it's been since 2019, since mm. the in-person Ansible Fest in Atlanta, now we're in Chicago, we had the pandemic. A couple interesting observations from our side that I want to get your reaction to, Adam Carroll, and that is one, um, Ansible's relevance has grown significantly since then just from a cloud growth standpoint, developer, open source standpoint, and how people work and collaborate has changed. So your contributor base in your community is getting more powerful in scope, in my opinion, like in, as they become, have the keys to the kingdom in, the, in their respective worlds as it gets bigger and larger. So the personas are changing, the makeup of the community's changing, and also how you guys collaborate is changing. Can you share your, what's going on with those two dynamics? Because I think that power dynamic is, is looking really good. How are you guys look, handling that? Yeah, so I mean, I, I had the opportunity to represent uh, the community on stage yesterday as part of the keynote and talk to this point specifically is, um, one of the things that we've seen is the project has had the opportunity to kind of grow and evolve. There's been certain elements that have had to kind of decompose. From a technology perspective, we actually had to uh, kind of break it apart and change the architecture a little bit and move things into what are called Ansible Collections, which you know folks here are very familiar with, know and love. And we've seen a lot of community work in the form of working groups coalesce around those organically. However, uh, they've done so in kind of different ways. They, they pick um, tools and collaboration platforms that are popular to their subject matter expertise uh, audience and things like that. So we find ourselves in a place where kind of the, the community itself had more or less segmented naturally uh, in a way, and we needed to find ways to, you know, kind of heal that fragmentation. It's by demographics or by expertise or both? Is it mostly, um, mostly expertise. Yeah. And uh, so there was an open source technology called Matrix. It is a open source, standardized, federated uh, messaging platform that we're able to use to start to bridge back some of those communities that had kind of broken off and, and made their, their own home elsewhere on the internet. So now we're able to, uh, for example, 
the Write the Docs uh, organization, they had a, a group of people who was very interested in contributing to the Ansible documentation, but they had already self-organized uh, on Discord. And what was interesting there is the existing team for the Ansible documentation, they were already on Internet Relay Chat, also known as IRC. And Matrix allowed us to actually bring those two together and bridge that into the other Matrix chat, program, uh, chat channels that we had. So now we're able to have people from all over the world in different areas and different platforms coalesce <laughs> and, and cross, like cross pollinate. Yeah. <laughs> and you're meeting the contributors exactly where they are and where they want to be, yeah. where they're exactly. comfortable. Yes, yeah, we always say we reach out to where they yeah. are, so. And, and, and much in the way that Ansible has the capability to reach out to things in their own way right. and, and allow that subject matter expertise to, you know, because the technology has the potential and possibility and capability to talk to anything over any protocol, mm -hmm. we're able to do, you know, kind of the same thing with Matrix, allowing us to bridge into any chat platform right. uh, that it has support for bridging and, and we're able to bring a lot of people together. Yeah. How's, that, how's the feedback been on that so far? Um, I, th I think it has been very positive. For example, uh, I want to highlight that the, the um, technical writers that we have contributing uh, via Discord is actually a group from Nigeria. And they've also participated in the uh, Contributor Summit online, virtually, um, jo joining us in, in, you know, on the Matrix platform. So that, that bridge that really helps to bring together people from different geographical regions and also uh, different topics and uh, arenas like that, so. What were some of the outcomes of the Contributor Summit, the, the first in-person in a while? Mm -hmm. uh, great that you guys were able to do seven virtually during the pandemic, that's hard. It's hard to get people together. You, there's so much greatness and innovation that comes when we're all together in person that right. you just can't replicate by video. You can do a lot. Right. But talk about some of the outcomes from Monday. What were some of the feedback? What were some of the contributions that you think are really going to impact the community? I think for a lot of us, myself included, the fact that we are in person and meeting people face to face, it helps to really build the connections. And when we do talk about contribution, the connection is so important that you understand well, this person a little bit about their background, what they have done for the Ansible project, and or just generally what, what they're interested in. That builds the rapport and uh, connection that helps you know, further um, you know, further collaboration in the future because um, maybe on that day we did not have any you know code contributions or anything but the fact that we had a chance to sit together in the same place to discuss things um, and share uh, new ideas roadmaps uh, it's really the, the kind of a big step to the future for yes. our community yes and exactly. in a lot of ways, we often, online, the project has various elements that are able to function asynchronously. So we work very well globally across many time zones, and now we were able to get a lot of people in the same place at the same time synchronously, in the same time zone. And then we had breakout sessions where the subject matter you know, working groups were able to kind of go and focus on things that maybe have been taking a little while to discuss in, in that asynchronous form of communication and do it synchronously and you know be in the same room and work on things. It's been it's been fantastic. Well developers they like they, they take to asynchronous like fish to water, it's not a problem. But I do want to ask if there's any observations that you guys have had now that we're kind of coming out of that one wave of the pandemic, but the world's changed, it's hybrid, hybrid work environment, steady state, so we see that. Any observations on your end on what's new that you observe that people are gravitating to? Is there a pattern of styles is or the same old self-governing or what's new? What do you see that's coming out of the pandemic that might be a norm? I, I think that even though people are excited to get back in person, um, there are things have changed, like you said, and uh, we have to be more um, aware of, there are people who think that not being in person uh, is okay, and that's how they want to do it, and we have to uh, make sure that they, they are included. So we, we did want to make a high priority for online participation in this event. And like I said, even though only 40, 30, 40 people signed up to join us online initially, so that was what we were expecting, uh, but in the end, more than 100 people were watching us and, and joining participation in uh, I'm sure the on-demand consumption will be good too. Right, yeah, <laughs> so you know, I think going forward that is probably the trend, and as, as much as we, we love being in person, we, we want this uh, to continue that yeah. we, we take care of people who, who are, has been constantly participating online and contributing. So. You're meaning, and again, meeting folks where they are, but also right. allowing the 
the, those members that want to get together to, to collaborate in person. Right. I can only um, imagine the innovation that's going to yeah. come, even from having part of the back. Right. And, and not to continue to harp on the Matrix point, but <laughs> it, it's been very cool because Matrix has the ability to do live video sessions using a, a open source, another to open source technology called Jitsi. So we're able to actually use the same place that we normally find ourselves you know, congregating and collaborating for the project itself in an asynchronous and you know, somewhat synchronous way to also host these types of right. things that are, are now hybrid that used to be yeah. you know, all one way or all the other. And it's yeah. been, it's the been integration incredible. Is, the integration has uh, been fascinating to watch how you guys do that. And also you know, with theCUBE, we've been virtual too. It's like, it's like people don't want another microsite, but they want a more of a festival vibe, a hub. Right. Like right. a place to kind of check in and have choice, not get Absolutely. jammed into a, you know, right. a forum or, you <laughs> yes. know, or whatever. Hey, if you want to be on Discord, be on Discord, right? right? Why not? And we still, you know, we do still have our asynchronous forms of work through yeah. Yeah. our Git, GitHub. We have our projects. We have our issues. We have our, you know, wiki. We have various elements there that everybody can <laughs> continue to collaborate on, and it's all been, it's yeah. all been very good. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of festivals, Hacktoberfest is going on. Not to be confused with Oktoberfest, that was last month. Talk about how the Ansible project and the Ansible community is involved in Hacktoberfest. Give us the deets. Carol? So yes, Hacktoberfest is um, an annual thing in October. So October, Hacktoberfest. Uh, I think it's organized by DigitalOcean for the past eight or nine years. And it's really a, a way to kind of encourage people to contribute to open source projects. So it's not Ansible specific. <coughs> But we, as an Ansible project, uh, encourage people to take this opportunity to, you know, a lot of them doing their first contributions during this event. And uh, when, when we first uh, announced uh, we are participating in Hacktoberfest, within the first four days of October, which is over a weekend actually, we've had 24 contributions, 24 issues fixed, which is like amazing, uh, like, you know, uh, just the interest and the, um, the momentum that we had. And so far, uh, until uh, I just checked with my teammates uh, this morning that we've had about 35 contributions so far during the month, which is, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, this is only for Ansible documentation. So yeah, specifically, and, and that's also one thing we want to um, highlight that contributions don't just come in code, in you know, um, kind of software side, but really there's many ways to contribute, and documentation is such a, a great way for first time users, first, first time contributors to get involved. So it's really amazing to see these um, contributions from all over the world, and also partly thanks to the um, technical writers in Nigeria kind of um, promoting and sharing this um, initiative and it's just great to see the, um, the results from that. Can you double click on the different ways of contribution? You mentioned a couple, documentation yes. being one, code being the right. other, but what is the breadth of opportunities that the contributors have to contribute to the project? Oh, there's, there's so many. So uh, I actually take care more of uh, outreach uh, efforts in the community. So I help to uh, organize events and meetups from around the world. And now that we're slowly coming out of the pandemic, I've seen more and more in-person meetups. Uh, I was just talking to someone from Minneapolis. They are trying to get, get people back together again. There are people in Singapore, in Netherlands, from pretty much you know, uh, all corners of the globe. Um, wanting to form, not just for the Ansible project, but the local kind of connection yeah. with the re people in the region, sometimes in their own language, in their local languages, to really um, work together on the project and just, you know. You have to create a global yeah. network. Right. I mean, it's like Ansible Global. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can create local subnets, not to get on networking <laughs> on those. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, one, one quick thing I want to touch on the Hacktoberfest. I think it's a great opportunity for existing contributors to mentor. Because many people like to help bring in new contributors and this is kind of a focal point to be able to focus on that. And then um, to, to the, uh, the other point, we, you know, it, it's, been, uh, it's been extremely powerful to see as we return these sub-communities pop up and, and kind of work with themselves. So on uh, different ways to contribute, 
Um, so code is kind of the one that gets the most attention, I think. Mm -hmm. Documentation, I think, is a unsung hero, highly important, great way. Um, the logistical component, which is invaluable because it allows us to continue with our uh, adoption and evangelization and things like that. So specifically adoption and evangelization, evangelization is another place that contributors can join and actually spawn a local meetup and then connect in with the existing community and try to you know, help increase the network, create a new subnet. Yeah. Yep. Network effects huge, and I think the thing that you brought up about reuse is, is part of that whole, things get documented properly, mm -hmm. the leverage that comes out of that just feeds into the system, that flywheel. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, that's how communities are supposed to work, right? Yep. Yes. That's what I was just going to comment on is the flywheel <laughs> effect. It's clearly present and very palpable. Thank you so much for joining John and me on the program talking about the Contributor Summit, the ways of contribution, the impacts that are being made so far, what Hacktoberfest is already delivering, and we're, we still have about 10 days or so left in October, so there's still more time for contributors to get involved. We thank you so much for your insights and your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Our pleasure. <laughs> for our guests, I'm John Furrier. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Chicago, day two of our coverage of Red Hat Ansible Summit 22. We will see you right now after this short break with our next guest.